Today we're going to begin our study of a molecular spectroscopy. Uh, this is a study of the interaction. This is a study of the interaction of electromagnetic radiation energy uh, with matter that can be used to obtain information about the identity and structure of substances. It's going to tell us two things specifically about the structure. One is things about bonding. And the second thing is it'll tell us stuff about the electrons. Um, the type of electromagnetic radiation will, will tell us, will determine the type of information which we're, is going to be obtained from the study. And also, if you'd like to read along your textbook, this is covered in, in the appendix. So it would be A, uh, and it's 0.74 in your appendix of your textbook. Let's go over the wave nature of light. Um, Electromagnetic radiation travels in waves, and this is true for all types, all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. We see there's an inverse relationship. If there's a low frequency, uh, which is a long wavelength, that's going to be a low energy. So the longer the wavelength, the lower the energy. And you see that relationship expressed in this formula. If we have a low, uh, a very short wavelength, we will have a very high energy. So let's go to the next one where we see a very, very short wavelength here, and that's going to be accompanied by high energy. Um, so a wave has two characteristics. One is frequency, and the other is wavelength. So let's relate this, this wave to the electromagnetic radiation. Now, electromagnetic radiation includes things from gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, visible light, noticing that the blue and the violet region is in the higher energy area because they have shorter wavelengths, and then the red is in a lower energy area with longer wavelengths. Then after that we have infrared, and also in this we want to add in, which is not on this chart, if we want to put this in right in this area, right here, is we have microwaves. I'm just going to put a little micro symbol in a wave, and it's not really, so that's going to be where the microwaves are located. Um, then after that we have longer wavelengths, such as radar, TV, and the radio waves. And these waves are about uh, the institute of like meters to tens of meters to hundreds of meters. And then you go to the other end, we see gamma rays and x-rays. These are ones that are dangerous, are very short. I mean, they're even smaller than a nanometer. And those are the ones that cause damage. So when we look at this, we can actually get inf different types of information depending on which types of radiation we use. So let's start with uh, uh, the information we get from infrared and microwaves. So if you look at this, infrared and microwaves, this, this region will give us information about bonding. Uh, so you get information about bonding from infrared and radio waves. Um, if you use parts of the visible light spectrum, ultraviolet and x-rays, this is going to give us information about electrons. And we'll discuss that on, on the next video. Um, and so uh, the electromagnetic spectrum includes all this and gives us quite a bit of information to, about the particles. So if we use ultraviolet, x-rays, and parts of visible light, we get information about electrons. And the stuff we're discussing today, specifically infrared and microwaves, will give us information about the bonds. Uh, so let's talk about the information we get from the lower part of the spectrum, which is the microwave and infrared. Let's discuss microwaves first. Uh, microwaves, everybody is a microwave. You're familiar with microwaves. Well, why do we use them so much? Well, the energy that's in the microwave is very similar to the rotational energy that's in the water molecules because a water molecule can vibrate or rotate. And we also know that temperature is proportional to the kinetic energy. So as you add microwave energy to water molecule, it rotates and thus its temperature increases. That's why we uh, use microwaves to heat our food. Um, and, and that's because the rotational energy that's in the molecule is very similar to the rotational energy that's in uh, the, uh, the microwave. And that's why if those energies match, that's when it, it, it can be used to tell us information about it. Now let's go to, uh, so the molecule basically absorbs energy that's in a way, in a way that's consistent to the, to the energy of the rotational energy of the molecule. Now let's look at infrared, and this gives us quite a bit more information. This uh, micro, uh, infrared, which you mentioned earlier, gives us information about bonds. And so that, so if we look at, we see we have a covalent here, bond here between the hydrogen and the carbon. And this bond is sort of like a spring, and so as you apply energy to it, that, that uh, spring can vibrate. Uh, so it causes a vibrational energy and, between the two atoms. And we see if you, if there's a different amount of energy in this bond, if this is a single, and it would be different if it was a double or a triple. 
When we find, find that the energy we apply, if it's a single, well, I'll just use one X for single, is less than that of a double, and it's less than that of a triple. So as you increase from single, double to triple, triple being the strongest bond, it requires much more energy to get that triple bond to rotate. And even within these categories, there's a, there's a distinction. Like for example, within a single bond, the amount of energy that's applied is gonna be different if it's, for example, a carbon-hydrogen bond or a carbon-oxygen bond. Those are two different amounts of energy. So before we go on, what, what happens? How is this information given to us? So next we're gonna look at a readout when a certain type of molecule was subjected to IR radiation. And here we have this. So this is what we call an infrared or IR spectrum. So one molecule was subjected to IR radiation and this is the information that was obtained. On the bottom we have wave number over centimeters. This is simply one over the wavelength of the amount of energy. So a couple things we wanna notice here. So this is telling us information about the bond energy. So we see these are, uh, they've given us a, a chart of what, five different types of bond energies. And, and we're gonna see if we can identify any of those bond energies with what we see on the chart. Well, first of all, we noticed uh, you have two different things going on in the chart. You have transmittance and absorbance. The, the top part of the graph is where you have transmittance. That really doesn't tell us too much. But the bottom, the peaks at the bottom, that's where you have absorbance and that's where you get information about the bonds in the molecule. So let's go to the first area, which is right here. It's just above 1,000. So just above 1,000. If you look at all these numbers we have here, the one that it lines up best, and I think you see it as well as me, is a carbon oxygen bond. So if we look at this, we would think that we would think we'd be able to identify, well, this is a carbon oxygen bond right here. So that would be one region. Then we go to the, another peak, and we have another significant peak in this region right here, and that's just below 3,000. So let's pick an, uh, something that's just below 3,000 on our chart, and I think that's a carbon hydrogen bond right there. And so this region would correspond to the carbon hydrogen bond. Okay? So there we have two regions. We got one region left. I'd like you to see if you can identify what bond you think is in this region, which is right here. Well, first of all, see if you can identify the region. Hopefully you identify the region as being right here. So the region's right here. We're trying to figure out the type of bond. So look at all the bond types and see if you can identify it. It's just below 3,500. And hopefully you guys did it. Here we are. It's the oxygen hydrogen bond. So this is the oxygen hydrogen bond right here. So there we have it. That's a bond that's in this region right here. So this tells us, uh, so, so far what we've done is we've looked at the low energy part of the spectrum and the information we have obtained from that. On uh, in the next video, we'll look more specifically at the energy we obtained from the high energy part of the spectrum.